How's it going, guys? This is Bailey again with Rogers Performance Marine. Uh, today, we're down here at our Hurricane store in southern Utah. Uh, we've got in a new 2024 Lund 1875 crossover. I wanted to kind of walk you through it, show you some of the changes they made for 2024, and then just go over the crossover in general to show you why it's such an awesome boat for our area. A um, few subtle changes they made for the year. Um, they've been making this boat for uh, quite a few years now, so not major dash changes like you may have seen on the um, Adventures, for example, uh, but they did do a few nice things to it uh, regarding the trailer, some electronics changes, um, and then some convenience options inside the boat itself. Um, so let's do a quick walkthrough and show you what's new for 2024. All right, while we're still outside the boat, first thing I want to show you, uh, first option is going to be on the trailer itself. Uh, so you'll notice they've got the uh, optional bow ladder on the upgraded trailers that you can get. Uh, makes boarding the boat um, when you're getting ready to launch in the water a lot easier. Instead of climbing on the fenders or using the transom ladder, now we've got this nice ladder that we can take. You now it's got four steps, sets perfectly to get inside the boat, and then a nice handle when you're getting outside the boat. Um, it's nice to have it done from the factory so you don't have to try and find some aftermarket option and hope it fits. Um, it's got good clearance between the boat and the trailer so you're not worrying about hitting the boat. Um, overall, you know, it's a Shorelander product and they've done a great job on it. Only other thing I want to show you on the front of the boat um, that you can see is a change for 2024. Uh, we equipped this with the new Minn Kota uh, Ultera Quest series. Um, the new Quest series from Minn Kota is definitely the best series of trolling motors on the water right now. So what we've got is a brushless trolling motor, so ultra quiet. Um, really cool thing about it is you can run 24 volt or 36 volt, either or. Um, so you get an increase in poundage and then the ability to run either systems. Uh, we've got this set up right now for a 24 volt um, setup, which is more than enough for an 18 foot boat. But if you buy something like this, decide you want to upgrade down the road, say do a 20 tie -E, trolling motor could really come with you then you could bump it up to a 36 volt or if you do a lot of you know bass fishing and you're utilizing a trolling motor a lot simple wiring change and add another battery and you're ready to go on a 36 volt system this motor is also equipped with iPilot it's going to be standard um, the Ultera is the automatic deploy automatic retract and then in the uh, motor here we do have the mega side imaging transducer which gives you side imaging down imaging and then US2 sonar um, so that's a huge change for this year. Um, they did come out with the Quest late last year, but now you're starting to see it on our uh, 2024 products. Um, so now we'll walk to the back of the boat, show you what we've got for a power plant, and then climb up the side and show you what else is going on for 2024. All right, so really quickly at the back of the boat before we hop up inside, I want to show you we've got this equipped with the Mercury 175 Pro XS. So again, 175 horsepower outboard. Um, this is the largest outboard you can put on it. Uh, you know, with the 18 uh, crossover, I have seen it equipped and I've sold it equipped with the 150 from time to time. Uh, the 150 Pro XS is a good performing motor, but at the end of the day, the boat's rated for 175. Here in Utah, we fish a lot of mountain lakes, so we're up at altitude. The 175 is going to be the best performing uh, motor option for it. When you're up at altitude, you won't necessarily feel that power loss near as much, but then when you get down to, you know, lakes closer to sea level, the thing drives like a sports car. Um, Basically standard for us, anything over 115 horsepower, we're going to put a stainless steel prop on it. So this is equipped with a 17 pitch Mercury uh, three blade stainless steel prop. Um, we don't have it set up right now with a kicker motor. It's an option. Um, the people that buy the crossovers in our area are using it for, you know, its intention. So they're going to be using it for 60, 70% fish and then 40, 30% recreation. So some guys might not necessarily want the kicker motor right away. We can always put it on aftermarket. So we like to give the uh, people the option to have it added or not at the time. Um, so now let's climb up inside, show you a few uh, features in the cockpit and the bow. All 
All right, now I want to show you guys just a quick overview of the cockpit here. Um, so again, inside the 1875 crossover, a big step up from the 17. I mean, you definitely can see the one foot in size here in the cockpit. Uh, we've got this boat equipped with uh, two additional pro ride seats on air ride pedestals. And then if you can see, it's got the uh, bucket seats on air ride pedestals uh, as well. Um, really nice. Once I get these uh, pro ride seats out of the way, I've got one up in the bow right now, one on the rear casting deck. You've got a nice open platform here, plenty of room. You don't feel too congested. Um, they did a really good job utilizing the space in the cockpit here. Uh, a couple things that are you know the same across the years, but I want to show you in the video. You do have the rear live well, so keep in mind the uh, crossover has one single live well in the uh, aft as opposed to one front bow and stern. Aft jump seats are super nice to have, so you can, like I say, use this area as a casting deck. But if you bring you know a couple people on board, especially if you only have four people with you on board, now I've got chairs where I can really. Now I'm short, but I can extend my legs and still have plenty of room, even with that. If we wanted to have two extra seats back here, there would still be room for it. Under these aft seats, you've got storage. Like I mentioned earlier, we don't have a kicker motor set up on here. So this is completely open for some nice extra storage. If we do mount a kicker motor, uh, this will likely be uh, taken up by another battery. Um, just depends on how the customer is going to equip this one. On the starboard side of the boat, um, like I mentioned, you got battery. That's going to be your main house battery. I don't know if you can see in the video, but this is one of the changes they made for 2024 by adding a battery cutoff switch. Uh, so in previous years with uh, the lot of crossover, if you wanted to kill power, you had the master power switch on the dash, um, but nothing to really kill power to the motor. Now you can shut power off and this compl uh, completely kills the whole house system. Go ahead and shut that. I mean, I don't know if you can see, but we still have got nice carpeted pocket storage, port and starboard side. Um, so you can throw rods in there, um, you know, paddles, whatever else you need. That's really open, easy to access. You can put a lot of gear in there. One thing that really sets the crossover apart is going to be its huge ski locker in the center. Um, so it's on a gas shock, holds itself up. You can use that for tubes, wakeboards, water skis, whatever you want to fit in there. It does really have a lot of room. Uh, the days you're out just fishing, fill it with fishing tackle. The day you bring the wife and kids and the rest of the family, uh, you get a lot of extra storage inside of it. Um, again, touched on the bucket seats a little bit. These are personally my favorite seats from Lund. Crossover is a really sporty boat to drive. It's really fun, rips around the water, and this kind of gives you that sports car feel. Um, the way they kind of wrap around you, that has plenty of room. Um, now going up to the uh, passenger side console, same as previous years, you've got a very deep uh, carpeted glove box, tons of room in there. I mean, if you're running like dual fish finders when you're done at the end of the day, you can easily put, you know, two Helix 10s um, in there with no problem at all. It is locking, keep all your valuables tucked away. Um, this boat's got port and starboard side under console drawers. So you can use those for, you know, plano boxes. A lot of guys will use those just as a secondary glove box also, just to put some valuables in there, wallets, keys, phones, stuff like that. Keep it locked and out of the way. Moving over to the center, we do have our uh, actual rod locker here. Very nice deep rod locker. Um, it's got um, uh, onboard charger, or yeah, excuse me, onboard charger in there. So you can see when that's illuminated when you've got it charging. And then moving over to the uh, driver's helm. So you can see we've got this package with a uh, Humminbird Helix 9. We basically run Humminbird on all of our equipment now. We've been getting into a lot of Garmin, um, but from the factory, we're usually doing Minn Kota on the bow, Humminbird on the console, and then we'll do some um, upgraded accessories from there. This Helix 9 is mega side imaging. Uh, we're running a transducer off the transom, but we very well could link it to the uh, um, trolling motor transducers if we wanted to do it that way. Um, slight change they made for 2024. They've got the new uh, chrome bezels, kind of spruce up the dash a little bit, make it look a little bit nicer to match the steering wheel that they have going on for the crossover. Um, switching, stereo system, that's all going to be the same, um, but they've done a really good way of laying out the crossover to give it that sporty look. Everything's easy to access and laid out nice right in front of you. So now we'll go up into the bow, show you a few things, and we should be all set. All right, just want to show you one last thing in the bow of the boat. Um, very nice size bow. I mean, you can definitely have two full adults sitting up in here while you're cruising down the lake. But then when you get to where you want to fish, very big casting platform, tons of room. 
the cool thing with the crossover is, like I mentioned before in the video, it's not used for just fishing. It's a crossover. That's why they call it that. So you're going to have a, usually more than just fishing gear, which usually ends up with bulky gear. Um, so as opposed to having another live well up in the bow, they've added two storage compartments in the bow. Um, they're not integrated storage like you might see on the adventure there's no pass through here but i do have two giant uh, storage lockers port and starboard side um, they've got a um, rimmed locker so you're not worrying about any water getting in there um, nice place to put all your uh, boating equipment as well you can see we've got this one packaged with the upgraded bow speakers so it does have a really good sound system in it powered by that kicker head unit i showed you earlier um, I did remove one of the bow cushions so you can see what it looked like without uh, the cushions in there. Um, but the bow cushions are make it nice and you know comfortable seat for someone while you're cruising up the lake. Again, there is uh, going to be some additional storage under the port side there. Other than that, kind of gives you a brief overview on the boat. Um, so like I say, our service guys can get this prepped and then uh, we'll have this on the water for someone this summer. Thanks for watching.